Okay, hi, welcome back from your break. Uh, this is video two of lecture eight, the engineering design course. Uh, we were running through the 10 step process for the quality function deployment method. And we got through the first seven and let's do the last three now. Uh, and then I'm going to give you guys an example uh, of how to use it. Uh, okay, so step number eight, uh, is we're going to plot in uh, matrix form the customer needs against the engineering characteristics that we as design engineers selected um, and we're going to include all engineering characteristics that influence any of the product attributes. It's one of the important aspects of QFD um, is looking at how um, the engineering choices uh, that we make as design engineers ultimately impact the ability of our final design ideas to meet uh, customer needs. So we want to lay it all out in a way that it's um, visually accessible. Uh, step number nine. Um, is identify numerical relationships between engineering characteristics and product attributes. So uh, we're actually going to use numbers essentially based on engineering intuition um, to decide how much one of our uh, selected engineering characteristics um, affects product attributes, which uh, essentially affects customer needs. Um, so in this way, you could figure out how different design choices um, impact customer needs, hopefully in a, in a positive way. Uh, now, this is an important point. Um, you are using numbers, but these numbers are essentially just based on your engineering intuition. So this is not um, a strictly quantitative analysis and the numbers should not be used um, to, to apply anything quantitative. They're just meant to, um, essentially to weight different um, contributions uh, to, to one another. So you guys will see when I do the example what I mean. Uh, and then finally number 10 uh, is we're going to set some quantitative targets for engineering characteristics and those are informed by uh, competitor products and or customer input. So that's the the 10 step process for QFD um, and it's probably not very helpful for me to just run through the steps um, and not show you how it works. So what I've done uh, is set up a, a very, very simple um, QFD matrix. And the QFD matrix is called uh, a house of quality. And, and this is kind of a um, a joke in a way. Uh, there really is no house here. Um, but why people call it a house is because it has different um, components that... Um, you know, look like a house. So there's this component here that people think looks like a, a roof, and then people think that this area looks like the inside of the house, and then this is a porch, and this is a basement, and so forth. So it, it's kind of a metaphor. It's not really a house, but um, that's what this graph is is called. So um, anyway, I've created a very very simple version of it. Uh, you can go uh, online and you can find very, very complex, very, very large house of quality diagrams, blank templates that you can use to carry out this procedure. Um, but I found that trying to use one of those complicated templates to teach how to do this um, is uh, very confusing. It's confusing even to me to try to figure out what in the heck the instructors are doing when they've got this huge house of quality diagram. So I've essentially uh, boiled this down to just the most essential and simple components. I've tried to label everything very clearly so that you could see what everything is. Um, and I'm going to walk through what, what each of the components of the House of Quality diagram is and what it does, and then show you guys an example essentially of, of how to use it. So, uh, But again, this is a very simple, very small version of the House of Quality diagram. So when you do a real engineering design process, um, you're going to want uh, something a little bit bigger than this because it's only got three customer requirements and only three uh, design requirement entry areas. Um, okay, so let's start out by just describing some of the properties of this house of quality diagram. Um, so we'll start here. Uh, and I should point out that um, <clears throat> this is a very dense, very information rich 
diagram. Um, so there's a lot of information here once you fill this in that can help in the engineering design process, which is why it, it looks so complicated. It's essentially a, a very, very dense repository of information. So here, this area that I've highlighted in red, that's where your customer requirements go. So you interview your customers, you develop a set of customer needs, uh, customer needs and customer requirements are synonymous with one another, and this is where you would list those customer needs or customer requirements. So um, again, in a real design process, you're going to have more than three customer needs. Um, so you're going to need a bigger house of quality diagram. But for our purposes, just so that you understand, um, I'm going to just stick with three customer requirements. <clears throat> the next thing uh, is the importance um, so based on your conversations with your customers, they're going to identify their customer needs and then you're going to need to extract from them information about how important each of those needs are relative to one another. And based on those conversations, you're going to assign a number between one and five, one being not very important and five being extremely important and you're going to place those numbers here in these boxes associated with these customer requirements. So if customer requirement number one is very, very important to the customers, you're going to place the number five here. If customer requirement two is not so important to the customers, you're going to place a number one or number two here uh, and so forth. So that's, that's the importance uh, waiting for the customer requirements. Next is design requirements. So um, in the formal engineering design process, um, you took, uh, at least you should have, took the customer needs and converted them into uh, engineering attributes, into actual physical attributes of a proposed design um, that meet those customer needs. And those physical attributes are the design requirements, and so the design requirements that you set as the design engineer are going to go here in these locations. So here's a spot for design requirement one, design requirement two, design requirement three. Um, each customer need needs to have at least one design requirement. Uh, sometimes each customer need can have more than one, but at least one design requirement per customer need. And um, again, in a real design, you're going to have a lot more than three design requirements. Uh, but because this is a simple example, I've just got three little sections here so that you can see where those go. Uh, okay, I'm going to pause here because we've hit our seven minute mark. Um, so we're going to pick it up from this spot um, after your break. So we'll see you back here in, in just a moment. Thanks.